The great philosopher Immanuel Kant once said, happiness is not an ideal of reason, but of imagination. And he was very probably talking about video games. Now, it's a well-documented fact. Records place him at multiple CEX stores, picking up some tasty bargains and swapping bants about Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy. It's all pretty remarkable, because, uh, you know, he's been uh, fucking dead for a while now. Thanks to its third-party support, the PS2 both technically and financially allowed for a lot more bizarro titles to slide under the wire, experiencing a slew of growing pains as companies transferred to the next generation. Enter the Dragonfly, which enters the loading screen. Wrath of Cortex, Wrath of Crap Graphics, that's, that's a good joke, no need to rewrite that shit. Core Design, who developed the Tomb Raider series, were victim to this very issue but not before squeezing out one whole new IP with their final bust- I'm- I meant to say Dusty, this was not- This is not a good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is- this is not going well. I mean, I was talking about these and not- well, anyway. The game was a herding sim, called Hurdy Gurdy. Now, I can't call this game a gem, or a rare find, or bad, or so bad. It's not even something I'm phased by as a concept. God knows I've, uh, spent time in far more questionable company. You're wrong! On the one hand, I love it for its potential and elements of its execution. On the other- <laughs> But what I think hasn't changed is my belief that it is to be recognised, if not played, and for the knowledge of its existence to be shared. So let's get right on in there and spread the box and... Oof. Gertie is the son of a master shepherd, who is about to take part on his island's tournament for shepherds. The prize is the ability to control the island via a magical acorn. It's perhaps an overly charitable prize, like giving out warhead codes. In fact, so much so that the current holder, his rival Sadorf, has used it to send Gertie's father into a deep sleep so that he may rule the island unopposed. It's up to Gertie to restore order and win back the acorn. The game essentially revolves around two goals. The first is to guide all the animal groups within a level to their correct pens. The second is to not break the game disc in half. <clears throat> we'll uh, cover the first one for now. Each animal features at least one quirk that makes their method of herding unique to the others. The chicken-like dupes are the basic fodder and need to be rounded up as a group and chased. The bleeps follow the sound of your flute, can glide from high ledges but can't get wet. Hmm. Oh, I don't know what you were thinking of. The honks can swim and must be brought to their eggs to hatch their young, and the grimps will eat all other fodder including you, and must be guided carefully with the flute. The major point of conflict are the gromps, who will kill any other animal and can only be penned by letting them chase you, whereupon they will be hoisted by their own pink petards and don't I just sound pleased with writing that, oh, Jesus. The game works on a dynamic ecosystem, so the added layer of challenge comes from how these animals interact with each other and their environments. This leads to some cool thinking cat moments on the part of the player. Time avoiding the gromps can be bought if you feed them a blurp, a small animal which makes them temporarily sick, or if they meet another gromp which will cause a fight. Bleeps can't swim, but dupes can float downstream and remain unharmed as long as they end up in some shallow water. This isn't even mentioning the two one-off species, gluters and soldier ants, with the latter being more distinct in how they will spear other critters. Keeping these creatures apart becomes your mantra forcing the player to see things logically and think about what combination of herding will best solve the level. You pen a grump next to its prey, it's your own damn fault, and uh, I learnt that one the hard way. I feel both fucked and impressed, you know? You know that fit? No? Ah, oh, shit, okay. Another nice touch is how you slowly gain items to change up your herding experience. There's a stick that allows the dupes to flock to a specific point, a horn which alerts grumps but scatters everyone else, and the aforementioned flute. All these items are worn by Gertie, so you can actually watch him tool up as the game goes on, and soon you'll find yourself using these in many different combinations. Now, uh, in theory, this all works pretty good, but uh, not every theory came from this dog-like smarty over here. Herding dupes is painful, fucking painful. Sometimes you'll have it down, using the angle between you and the herd to accurately guide them home. But sometimes they just scatter or twist violently away from you like a war bride. And there's always one little cretin who steps out of line and needs to be shown your herding stick. Good luck if this happens. Cause it's gonna happen. Bleeps are a bunch of kamikaze pilots who overindulge a bit in their gliding. Gromps can screw with your controls if you're close enough to trigger the chase, but not actually next to them. And sometimes you'll see someone's gotten eaten while you were thinking what to do next, and uh... There's no getting around it. The camera is the worst thing since the, uh, well, the worst thing analogy. The offered camera control makes perfect sense. Close up, far out, and isometric. And all work at first, until they start getting snagged on bits of scenery, or areas designed solely to pull one focus over another. Nothing more frustrating than plotting out a route than having someone put their hands over your eyes as you lay it out. This shouldn't have to be the trials of goddamn Sinbad. And sometimes this shit is just downright obtuse, a bit like that last joke. Maybe it's just the awful camera and the quasi-useful map. A full-screen map would have been more appropriate. But sometimes my brain will just blank on mapping out an area and remembering how everything connects. 
I want to say it's poor level design, but actually there's a lot here that works, and certainly in terms of how the puzzles are constructed, they all eventually make perfect sense. I think it's a case of almost too much freedom. With all the unpredictable issues and the stumble across it approach to puzzle solving, it becomes difficult in a plain level to really get your bearings or true spatial awareness. Also, doesn't help that some levels don't need you to finish all the herding. As it goes on, this becomes more and more required, but for large levels like the earlier stages, an extra incentive was needed to make them replayable. The crazy thing is, I want to go back and prove myself. I want to see if I can beat it, just to say I could. But the game gives me no real incentive to invest that far for every level. Luckily, there is the option to gather all the collectible bells in a level for a locked X extra, but these also later on will unlock switches that you can activate to continue through a level, which can feel much more like a chore than it should. And that all sucks because, while I spent a few minutes lambasting all the finer details of the game's shortcomings, there is something here worth seeing. Why? Well, uh, views on this video for a start. Cut that, let's, uh, let's get that out of here. Hurdy Gurdy would just be another slightly buggy, poorly implemented idea if it wasn't for the fact that in both gameplay and visuals, it showed the potential for something I didn't think I'd see for something truly different. It's not wholly original, but it pulls from a bunch of sources that paints a new picture. It's an experience I can only get by playing this game. Plot-wise, the story's riddled with holes, but it's made up for by the individual experiences. Gertie's journey takes him across the island, and no two scenarios he encounters are truly the same. It could be argued that some are too random to feel justified, I certainly wasn't expecting any boss fights, but they all fit within the core mechanics. And honestly, I like the uneven feeling of surprise events and tasks. Makes the game feel like a genuine journey. It's filled with little secret nooks and crannies that encourage exploration and make things feel more considered. One thing the game really has going for it is its own little population. I was genuinely surprised at how many uniquely designed individuals there are and some of the flavours they bring to the experience. Some of them are paper thin, but some are actually really fun and paint some vivid pictures. And some are just, uh, special. Sometimes it's best to just sit back and think. Watch the clouds go by, listen to the birds. Huh. The strangest things just come to you when you just think. Mm. Oh gosh be gore, sweet little Irish leprechaun. You gotta go steal this pot of gold, oh Jesus to be sure, I'm not even joking, that's the mission. Matthew Matosis. Martin! Who the fuck is that again? You clowns. Tis only myself, tis only myself, I've got some coffee there, hey? No, I'll have that, a bit of the drop of that, alright. <laughs> Gertie himself errs on the side of Bland, which, given the level of character everyone else has, feels really off. I mean, not just Bland, he almost comes across as horribly rude in his complete indifference to some of the insane shit unfolding before him. You got them all right! Let's see what you've won! Thanks. Bye! The 22 different stages throughout the game are not only well varied, they're well paced. A story mission based level can be followed by a pure herding level, which can shake things up by focusing on certain herding combinations. Characters only offer time challenges, but often the style of herding within them differs completely. And when you know a level, when you think you're on the right track, and when the camera isn't doing its tax returns, this thing plays alright. Every time you sneak past a grump with your flock or shave a minute of your best time, you feel you did pretty good. And then there's the art style, the overall atmosphere. I won't lie, this sticks with you. It's actually got a very competent sense of art direction, which isn't the kind of praise I dish out very lightly. Not only did they actually capture the sense of a Disney-esque animated film, maybe more Don Bluth than anything else, they also really delivered on a beer-soaked, bleary-eyed, null-to-the-root, oldie-woldie, goblin-y feel. Goblin. From the character designs, to the grinding, ethereal, girdy music, to the misty forest bathed in soft sunlight. Every level feels populated by nature, if not because of the herding animals, then because of all the dynamic prop ones scattered throughout. The entire island feels full and alive and fresh, and a real pleasure to wander through the fields and ponder what on earth could be beyond the glade. And I don't think it's any accident that the temple levels feel so well formed in both layout and aesthetics. That was not an allusion to- ah! Herdy is undone mostly by its own ambition. They were aiming for a folklore animated feature feel and they nailed it, but they were also aiming at another huge target. Innovative gameplay. For a team of about 10 people, that's a pretty big ask. The storytelling never really adds up, making tasks feel pretty convoluted or arbitrary, which is such a shame. This is a style I've never seen captured quite so well. The only thing that comes close is probably FF9, and that's from the perspective of Japan rather than the specific routes explored here. Honestly, the idea of a game based around an ecosystem is still fascinating. It's a great alternative conflict to combat and platforming, and goes the next step beyond Pikmin in that regard. Well, theoretically speaking. 
There's very little info out there on it, and it seems that all the people involved are now scattered to the four winds. But if any of them are listening, I'd love to see some more art released from the production. The extras feature a wealth of content that showed just how many options and ideas were being considered, and it's clear that they weren't even remotely done with exploring the potential. But the time for it to come back is long gone, and much like an old fairy tale, I can only hope snatches of it are out there on the wind, and not like in the bin, which is probably more likely. It's a weird little museum piece, and I implore you to give it a go if you're at all curious. There's no good reason this shouldn't be useful for us in the future, to learn from and improve on. With the 3D platformer peeking back through the letterbox, perhaps we'd better see to it sooner rather than later. Now that's it, done with the video now. It's over. Thanks for watching everyone. More content is coming. I'm working the fires in the basement and stoking the boilers and our uh, uh, Jimmy lads. Alright, uh, getting back to the boat before I finish uh, what, uh, what am I doing? gonna be a star! I'm gonna be admired like James Dean or Mr. Bean.